Hey, wonderful saints, what's going on? This is your brother in Christ, Brian, and this is Love Has a Name YouTube channel. Welcome back. Today's date is March 8th, 2024. Happy Friday to those of you watching today. I hope your week has not been as busy as mine. It has been quite a whirlwind. And so uh, I'm recording this just a little bit uh, later in the afternoon uh, because if it gets too late, I tend to be a little bit wiped out. <laughs> so I want to make sure I get this video out to you. And so you'll be watching this later tonight. This video is going to be a prophetic word. The Lord spoke through prophetess Amanda Grace of Ark of Grace Ministries. It's a wonderful ministry, very unique with the whole um, animal, a thing that the Lord is not only his humor, but his delight and joy and just how he's using the animals. It's just such a unique way of how the Lord is using Amanda Grace. So um, I hope you can see that our Lord cannot be limited and he does such wonderful, unique things. And he has just a variety more than we can even imagine. Amen. So in case you are new to Amanda Grace's ministry, please make sure you look down in the description and you'll be able to see how you can get onto her blog and subscribe to her ministry channels, YouTube, etc. Amen. This specific word we are going to jump into tonight is dated January 22nd, 2024. This word came while Amanda Grace was at the gathering conference, I guess you could say, at the gathering in Grand Ridge, Florida, when she was with Timothy Dixon and his wonderful ministry. So before we jump into it, because I took a look at it and it's actually, I would say about a half the length of what her normal words are, but for the Lord to speak through her during uh, not a broadcast or in, in her personal uh, time, but rather at a conference. It's uh, It just seems a little bit that much more special because the Lord in that moment wanted his word to be heard at that very moment to those who would be there listening, to those who would be watching the broadcast, and of course here in written form. All right. So you can always go and read the prophetic words earlier. Um, then I put them out for yourself, or you can come here and tune in and allow me to read them and allow the Holy Spirit to flow with whatever uh, insight or revelation or prophetic connections he wants to bring. Amen. All right. Well, let's step into the presence of the Lord and let's read and hear what the Lord has to say to us. Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit. We come before you boldly, yes, but with thanksgiving, with praise, we come before you because we have now the access to you through your son Jesus, by his blood. We thank you for what he has done. Lord, we thank you for all you are doing, all that we do not even see or perceive. You are working, God. You are always working and you work all things for our good according. Hmm. I was mixing two scriptures there, Lord. I'm going to speak them both. You work all things for our good to those who love you. That would be us. And you are called according to your purpose. And together with the scripture that says that you shall supply all our needs according to your riches that are found in Christ Jesus. And as Jesus said, all that they, speaking of us, may be one. I, that's Christ, in them, that's us, and us in him. Thank you, Lord, for John 17. Thank you, Lord, for John 15. May we grow into that knowledge, 
into that perception, into that knowing, that conscious awareness of our oneness, of our union with Jesus, with you, Father. Holy Spirit, lead us, guide us, teach us. We can do nothing on our own. We do not want to lean on our own understanding, for that is futile, pointless, and religious, and we don't want to be modern-day Pharisees. We give ourselves over to you, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to speak with you like you're right here, because you are. And if you were to respond to what I just said, you would say yes, because I am. Thank you, Lord, for being the great I am, ever present in times of trouble. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your presence. May your people be blessed. May they be fortified. May they be strengthened. May they be invigorated with new found boldness, fierceness against evil, humble, yet bold, righteous, and holy. Give us strength, Lord. In Jesus' name, we receive it, and we thank you, and give you all the glory. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, let's get into the word. This word begins like this. Amanda Grace, under the unction of the Holy Spirit, she says, By the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the Spirit of the one true living God, may only the truth and power of Almighty God, with authority, now come forth in Jesus' name. And the Spirit of the Lord says this day, for I, the Lord, thy God. Is my arm too short that it cannot reach? Is my hand too weak that it cannot save? For I am raising up out of the heart of your nation a fresh wind and a holy fire. It's going to be, says the Lord, thy God this day. A cloud by day and a fire by night. That is going to sweep across your nation. For I, the Lord thy God, am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first, yes, and the last. I am he who liveth and died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, says the Lord. Be thou holy, for I am holy. For this is a holy season, says the Lord, of redemption. For your cries have come up before my courts, says the Lord. My courts, not the courts of man, that have fumbled and manipulated and done blasphemous and egregious things. You have grieved the Spirit, says the Lord. You have grieved it, and it has come up to my throne, says the Lord. And I, the Lord thy God, am the righteous judge, and I have taken a scroll, says the Lord, and I have written down, says the Lord, the judgments of the matters of men that are weighing in this hour, that is, going to not only tip the scale, of this nation, but it is going to sift the church, says the Lord, for my church will come into order, says the Lord. I will redeem my flock from the snare of the fowler, and from the hand of the oppressor, and from those that wanted to take them on a trans journey. I, the Lord, never ordained. I never ordained it. And I, the Lord, am calling it back in this season, now. 
I'm calling you, my children, to get under my wings and take refuge. My truth, my truth, not the truth of the world, not the truth of men, my truth shall be your shield and buckler. As you go forth, for you, says the Lord, are the standard for when the enemy comes in like a flood. The Spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against him. I am raising that standard, says the Lord. Take hold of it, agree with it, for I, the Lord, in this hour am doing a great purge, says the Lord. A historic purge, a purge of every idol in the lives of those in my church. A purge in the lives of those that want to occupy the hill of this land. Woe unto you, says the Lord. Woe unto you, for you have taken laws that were divinely inspired, and you have used them against a weapon, against your own people. Your own people, says the Lord. And I, the Lord, shall take the armor of God, and I shall apply it to those I have gathered unto me. And you shall march. In this season, you shall run the race with excellence. You shall activate your faith. You shall be fervent and effectual. For I, the Lord thy God, I am a rewarder of those who diligently seek me. And because you have diligently sought me in this hour, I am pouring out to you, running over in your lives and multiplying unto you, every good and perfect gift that comes from above. I am equipping you with it. I am opening doors that have remained locked for years, for it is an appointed time in the earth, and I, the Lord thy God, shall have my way in this nation. I shall have my way in Israel. I shall yoke the two ox. I shall yoke them unto me, and they shall do the will of the Master that has sent for them. I, the Lord, am looking to rescue my people. The spirit of Aparte has risen up again in South Africa. I'm going to pause right there. Um, I'm reading it. I just want you to know, saints, I am reading it the best I can because the Lord is just flowing. And so I believe that this was just written down. I don't think... Um, um, how can I say? Not all the punctuation is there for me to know kind of when to pause. So as I'm doing it, I'm kind of just, I'm trying to uh, verbalize it in the best way so that it's a little understandable. Um, and this specific word here, the spirit of aparte, or it's spelled apart with an E at the end. I believe that's supposed to, supposed to read apartheid, uh, which I believe I've heard before, but I do not know the meaning of the word. So if you know the meaning of the word, apartheid um in fact let me see if i can just super quick figure out there it is apartheid in south africa it means a policy or system of segregation or discrimination on grounds of race that's a short sentence but a mouth full okay so the word is spelled a p a r t h e i d all right praise the lord no criticism at all just you know just trying to make sure we understand uh how how to read this at least for me to help you out amen all right and um i just thought to hit the little um speaker icon to actually pronounce it correctly because i was pronouncing it wrong so apparently it's one of those words that is pronounced in a way that it doesn't look so it's actually pronounced let me play it for you here this is how you pronounce the word apartheid there you go all right <laughs> so the lord was just saying this the spirit of apartheid has risen up again in south africa and i the lord have judged that spirit and those that want to stand in the courts and blaspheme my children, my holy children. Curse 
the armies of the living God, I, the Lord thy God, have sent judgment into the earth. And that spirit of apartheid shall be put down and buried in South Africa and the surrounding countries delivered from the shackles that it has tried to drag it into another war that is to do nothing but divide. Lastly, the Lord says, I, the Lord thy God, am staring that division down. I am looking I am looking it in its evil perverse eyes and as it trembles my holy angels are dispatched to drag it back to the pits from which it came for I the Lord thy God in this hour I am pouring out my glory I am pouring it out I am bringing my people not only out of Egypt Egypt is coming out of them. Oh, that is deep. Oof, you know, if you haven't written a comment yet, let's type this in the comment. <laughs> God is bringing his people out of Egypt. And Egypt is coming out of them. Amen? All right. So the Lord was saying this. Egypt is coming out of them. The idols are coming out of them. The idols are coming out of the highest seats in the land. You may cling to the horns of the altar, but you will not stand in a seat I, the Lord, have anointed and appointed for such a time. So cleave unto me, my children. Know that I am in Know that I am the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Receive it. Activate it. It is your weapon right now against a very, very trembling and nervous kingdom of darkness. As they have been baited to fall in this hour by my power and your faith Behold, I have given it unto you this day. Use it, for they shall lift the name of my Son above this nation into the airwaves, into the air. Wow. And there shall be a shout of victory from my people. By the end of this, if you stay the course, thus says the Lord of hosts in Jesus' name. Wow. Thank you, God. <clears throat> well, thank you for bearing with me as I try to, you know, read and pause at appropriate moments. Um, as I'm doing this, I'm processing also to understand it as I'm reading it and whatnot. But that is awesome. The Lord is saying that he's speaking about the airwaves, which is awesome because we know when it comes to the airwaves and radio, we know that that deals with frequencies right so you know if there's any christian or believer out there and you're still you know quote unquote spooked out by certain things like frequencies vibrations certain words that may seem new agey in reality we have we have been um uh, we have been deceived to think certain words are evil when in reality it's only the dark side that has put certain words out there in connection to evil and to evil things and the evil ways that they use it but in reality the evil the dark side never created anything which means that there is always a righteous real for every twisted counterfeit all right, let me give you an example, amen. And this is this is very very good for for us to learn regarding 
Uh, and for us to really face, you know, that we are ignorant in many things. You know, every single person in the world is ignorant, including myself, of many things. Okay? <clears throat> what is the definition of ignorant? Well, I was just going to tell you, but hey, I got this little tab I had open anyway, so... Um, let me just read you what it says. Okay. Ignorant. Here is the definition. Lacking knowledge or awareness in general. Uneducated or unsophisticated. All right. Now, this whole thing of um, in general, that is obviously speaking about in general. But people can be ignorant about specific things. All right. If you ask me to talk to you about, I don't know, racquetball or something, I would be like, uh, I don't know. Okay. In other words, I'm saying I am ignorant of the sport, racquetball. Okay. So every one of us is ignorant. But sometimes we're just so quick. If someone dares say that we're ignorant, we it's like we take offense without having an awareness of what it even means, which I think is foolish and immature, and we need to be able to to admit that to ourselves, right? So we can grow. So the only example I'm going to give you in this video <coughs> is, um, I'll take this word. People think the word manifest is evil. They think, oh no, it's new age. It's um, personal development. Oh no, you, you can't manifest your dreams. And, you know, when people hear things like that, they think it's evil because the world is doing it without Jesus. Okay? Now, because you're doing because they're doing it without Jesus, it's wrong. That is correct. It's wrong. We shouldn't be doing anything without the Lord. But it doesn't mean the word is evil, and it also doesn't mean the principles or the spiritual laws. It doesn't mean that they are from the devil because again, the devil's never created anything, all right? So let me give that example again, the word manifest or manifestation. If you've read the word, you will literally see the word manifest and manifestation in various places. So you see, sometimes we are ignorant of, of the understanding of God, okay? All right, it's getting dark, so I had to uh, close the shade and just put some put my ring light on here. So we can't be ignorant of understanding the things of God. Okay. And that goes with the scripture, Hosea 4, 6, where it says, God says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Well, the Lord's not saying all oh, my people perish because they don't know how to grow crops. Okay. He's not talking about basic earthly knowledge. I believe the Lord is talking about my people perish because of their lack of the knowledge of God. Right, so we having Christ and having the Holy Spirit, we cannot be ignorant to the things of the Spirit. We should not be ignorant to the things of God, the ways of God, the nature of God, the character of God, and His traits. If we can learn some very, very basic things, and there are so many wonderful foundational things which I'm always trying to teach you and share here. And I repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it because eventually it's going to get into your soul if you remain open, right? And so if we can learn some basic things about the Lord and we know his word, then we'll realize things such as the word manifest. When you make something manifest, it's basically something that's being revealed, all right? And when the Lord says, speak to that which is not as if it were, then also when we are praying and he tells us to believe that we have received the very thing that we're asking for, even if we don't see it, because he says we walk by faith and not by sight, it will manifest itself. Okay, so you see, here's the biblical, scriptural examples, godly examples, and then you have people, you know, in the new age, in the personal development, and they're talking about, you know, manifest your dream, manifest your this, manifest your that. Again, if they're doing it without Christ, it is wrong. But get this, it doesn't mean that the principles are wrong. The enemy can only take what already exists 
and twist it so that it will steer people away from God towards things, towards the world, towards vanity. Wouldn't it be amazing if God's people could gain understanding? The book of Proverbs tells us to seek wisdom. That's the principal thing. And in all you're getting, get understanding. That's not normal understanding because the Lord literally says, do not lean on your own understanding. So if there is understanding of self, then there's also understanding that is of God, spiritual understanding. And then we got another layer. See, the Lord is just leading me here. He's just bringing things out from the word. Then there's another layer, Isaiah 11, verse 2. We talked about the seven spirits of God. And one of those spirits is the spirit of understanding. So we need the understanding of God. In fact, that is like one of the things that I crave constantly. And I just love and I just honor understanding. Which is why I always posture myself in a humble manner to learn from anyone, to listen to anyone. Even people who, who will write and they'll say things like, you know, oh brother, you're wrong because this scripture, da 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 da. Usually the first thing I'll do is, is uh, reply, that's even if I do reply, and I will ask them to explain why. Most of the time, they can cite a scripture, which to be honest, even a kid can cite a scripture if they just memorized it. It doesn't mean they have understanding of it, which a lot of people don't have understanding of scripture, but they will quote it, not having the, um, the true understanding, and then that's why they don't get the spiritual things because they're too busy on their leaning on their own understanding and the carnal mindset and the bible tells us i believe it's romans that the carnal mind is at enmity with god so um the point of all that is don't be afraid okay if you hear me say things such as manifestation if you hear me talk about frequencies if you hear me talk about vibrations now it doesn't mean it's evil just because it's out in the open from the dark side. <laughs> There's always a godly version because they wouldn't even be able to have their own version had it not been created in an authentic way by God first. Seriously think about what I'm saying because then when you see things that are evil or you see things that are a little weird or odd, if you will take time to really ponder and remind yourself of this foundational truth that I'm sharing with you, which is that God created all things. And that if there's anything out there that looks weird or odd, um, conspiracy theories, it's all over the movies as well. And there are things like, oh man, like what is this about? You know, you know, what's this agency doing and what did they do here and what are they trying to do here? The concepts that they are using, they didn't make it up. There is a righteous, authentic version of God. But the enemy has taken hold of these things, twisted them, and presented it because the enemy has power over the airwaves, at the moment at least, <coughs> the media and so forth, and they project it and pour it out there. So when people are watching it, they think, oh, it's completely evil, when in reality, it's only evil because they've detached God from it, but rather the roots and the, I don't know, maybe not the roots, the, the framework of certain things isn't evil. All right, so anyway, I don't know if this is too deep for you all. I, I barely got even into it, but... There are things that I will be sharing, and hopefully this explanation kind of preps you towards those future things. Amen? All right, well, I'm going to leave you with that. God bless you all, and I'll see you in the next video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and look in the description to see how you can follow Amanda Grace's ministry as well. Amen? Like, leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.